Okay, so this week I was working on creating uh, an application to forward all internal Kubernetes events into OpenMS events. So of course I started using the easy path, which is like just using the Kubernetes API because it has a way to watch for changes. So you can like register uh, using JavaScript and see all the changes. And that works, but uh, it looks like it is kind of expensive uh, because this CPU on the image was like getting high and was and I uh, I was just using Minikube but for like a few uh, pods, so it should not be consuming that much. So that's how I started to looking for alternatives. And the Go client is actually part of the Kubernetes API internally. So that's how mm -hmm. Kubernetes itself is implemented. So of course, it uses the API more intelligently and it's able to create like a very performant uh, listeners for the internal events. So the thing to work with Go is like Go is a compile, uh, meaning that uh, you have to target a specific uh, revision uh, in order to run it. So if like, for example, here I'm using the Go lang based on Alpine to generate the binary. And of course, the actual runtime is also Alpine. If I change it to, like, let's say, I use Ubuntu here, it won't work. And if I use Ubuntu here and leave Alpine here, it won't work. So that's the kind of thing to work in Go. The same thing is like if I build the binary on my Mac, of course it won't work because I'm going to be running on Linux. So in order to use the uh, Go library, that you, that's based on Go modules. So I have to predefine the Go modules with all the dependencies with the actual source code and then it generates the thing it's a very tiny image after that and of course to use it between uh, within uh, kubernetes because i'm accessing kubernetes api from within the cluster i have to provide uh, permissions for that so as you remember my talk in this case i have to create a service account and a cluster role, which all the things that I want to access. And of course, the like cluster role binding for that service account uh, associated with this uh, role. And then the magic happens here. It's like I'm telling Kubernetes to run this deployment, use this service account, and that's automatically going to bind the uh, token secret that it used to access the API and the client is just going to work. So, and actually for, I decided to uh, do a multi-purpose for the code. So it's like, if you are running locally, we'll try to find the kube config. So that's where you can like test the thing on your machine. And if you don't provide it, it will assume you are within the cluster and we'll use the internal environment variables to reach the API. So it's like, just for demonstration, I'm going to uh, have my, same lab that I have on Monday with all the stuff. So I'm just going to tail the logs for the event watcher. It is right here. in a special namespace and then here on a, another console I'm going to create something so it's like a, for example I'm just going to create a nginx and you see that it detected that uh, something changed and actually it sent the event to OpenMS and if we now go to see the events here I have my Kubernetes event here that the nginx was created. And of course, similarly, if I just decide to remove it, so the same thing happened. And of course, I'm going to have a deleted one. 
So for the basic stuff, that's cool. But the, the thing that's actually provide more value because uh, most of the solutions that I saw that were already implemented were actually based on just creating pods or deleting pods. But what if there was a problem when creating a pod? So it's like I'm going to create the same image again, but I'm going to misspell the image. So of course, it, that image doesn't, doesn't exist. So when I do that, it will create it, but then it will detect that it was an error. And all those errors are forwarded as well to events here, so like this one. So it tells me, hey, someone tried to create that pod with an image that doesn't exist. So you can trap like low level problems that are actually ex exposed through the API differently than, than just when you look at uh, the pods events. And that's pretty much what you are able to see if you do scribe pod nginx, you are going to see pretty much the same errors here. I'm pretty much like forwarding that to uh, OpenMS. And I decided to use the events API. So Kubernetes has something called events also for that kind of things. But I could be using the same uh, pod API and look for the updates, but that's kind of tricky. So it's easier to treat it like an independent messages, which is why I use the events one. So, well, what is the other one that I was going to show? Okay, so the only thing that's not working right now or, uh, or the thing that's pending is that when you register, uh, for listening for events. So when you create what they call informers, I declare my informers and I decide, hey, when something is added, run this, this and when something is deleted, run this. Uh, it will receive everything that's already on the internal Kubernetes catch. Means that if you started, get the catch, forward all the events to OpenMS and just stays there listening for new things. But if you stop the pod and then start it again, it will resend the same events that were on the catch again. So in order to avoid that, you have to go further on, I mean, on using more specialized uh, code. Um, the thing is, I'm, I'm a very beginner uh, level when dealing with Go, so I'm not very confident still with uh, reading things in Go, although it's pretty nice but weird at the same time. So I'm just getting used to it, to be able to pretty much emulate what a real controller within Kubernetes does. The thing is, that's so hard that probably I will end up migrating the code using the operator's SDK. Because I, now I am turning the realm of pretty much implementing like an operator, which is of course not doing any, uh, doesn't have like a custom resource definition, but it's just going to listen. But essentially any controller will listen in for things and do other stuff. In my case, I'm just forwarding. So that's why I only need like read only access, but that's pretty much what it does. So in terms of what I did, that's all what I have, but I wanted to show what I couldn't have time on, on Monday, which is uh, upgrading OpenMS on the fly. So... One quick question on this. Uh -huh. do that. Um, all these, uh, have you thought of uh, a, a good way to associate, if I had a, a bunch of different Kubernetes instances running, it looks like all of these, there's no node associated with these events yet. Exactly. So, so how do you, how would we do that? Would we create that's a virtual the, that's, Kubernetes node? And, yeah, I'm, sti I'm still thinking about it. So one way could be like, a, of course, define uh, just a, something that represent the cluster. Another thing will be like uh, defining the actual host work, the worker nodes, because I get the information like where that pod is, is, is running or trying to run. So I can associate it with the worker node if we're monitoring the worker nodes. That's another possibility so that I, I leave it like that right now because I'm still not sure what would be the best way to do it. And also because those events are kind of like independent, uh, bringing the concept of 
uh, alarms is not obvious because it's, it's like there's not going to be a concept of uh, this is a problem and this is a rearm of that problem. So it, all, all of them will have to be somehow like alarm type equals three. And then you can do probably Alec or something else to correlate the ones that might be, because of course there are going to be a series of events that might be associated, but then it's not intuitive that they have to be associated. Like when I created the wrong pod, so you see like the not uh, the pod was added and then immediately like three uh, yeah. messages with different problems, but all of them are associated. So that's like a good case for like creating a situation in that case. Cool mm -hmm. problem. So, so basically uh, OpenMS right now is uh, running uh, latest 24.1.1. So I already created a branch here. Yes. And that branch, the only difference between the running configuration and this is just I change uh, the version of the images. So it's like if we go here, I just using custom image for simplicity, but it's like all of them are running image like this. And I just change it to use this one for OpenMS, uh, Minion and Sentinel. And I am going to upgrade all of them at the same time. I'll, uh, Kubernetes is going to do it gradually, like one by one. So when you apply changes, you see like, of course, there's a lot of def YAML definitions that I didn't change. But when you see like the ones that are associated with OpenMS says configure. So when it says configure, it means that something is changed and it will have to recreate it. And of course, it will eventually like start to spinning up the things again. And because in the way I configure the image, uh, Minions and Sentinel depends on OpenMS because OpenMS is not online. They will, they will hold off until OpenMS is running and then they will start. So let's get a couple of minutes. That should not take that long. <laughs> okay, so OpenMS is almost there. Maybe it's already up and running. There it is. Okay, so let's see if I use my yet. <laughs> exactly. Can you just please? That's what it used to be. Really? It was slow? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, the problem is it, what you need to do to check out like 1.0. Yeah. <laughs> it was like eight hours. Really? No, no, it's, it's like you next to go to 1.0 now. It's like, like it's so fast. Yeah. Because okay, it starts. Start. So let me just refresh this. You just have to be what it um, is. <laughs> Same as before, so everything is. So now it, it is upgraded. Everything that used to be there is still there. And uh, 
you do about now I'm running 25 and keep in mind that I was able to properly fix the graph stuff so the graph stuff even if I upgrade up and I'm still running so that's uh, the thing that I mentioned on the init script that's actually how to fix all the craft stuff every time it starts. So even if you upgrade accidentally, that should work. Even if you downgrade, unless you added something that uh, only exists on the newer version. And if I do the same for, let's say, minion zero, see like. Oh. So see it's running twenty five. But it's not uh, fully up yeah like a minion takes a while and, and now it should be up and running nope oh yeah <laughs> let's check out uh, something now Route complete here. Any of those? So at least well, Sentinel is already up on twenty-five, and eventually I hope the minion will do the same. But essentially, it's like what I did on this init script is not like. Uh, dark magic it's like it's just like i know that the core uh, craft files uh, have like version information so i just override them all the time and then reapply the changes for the features because uh, i pass which features i would like to have as an environment variable so it reapplies the change and everything that used to be there is still there because I have a persistent volume for the etc directory. So yeah, that's pretty much what I have. And now it works. Nice. <laughs> Cool.